Hey groups, uh, so good to see you guys. I hope you had a great Christmas and a happy new year. Um, we're going to continue in our series. We've been looking, we've been just starting in the book of Genesis. And if you missed it this past weekend, Eric spoke on um, that this idea that this story, there's not like a perfect ending right now, right? We've looked through Genesis. We've seen how sin has entered into the world. Um, and we've looked at the story of Noah. And it's not just this uh, fairy tale ending right away here. Um, but we, when we looked at the story of Noah, we saw that he stood out in his culture. He was very different from everyone around him, um, especially to the point that he was told to build a boat that who knows if anyone knew what a boat even looked like back then. So he would have stood out in some incredible ways. And some of the points that Eric landed on that I want to just remind you before we jump into the content for this week um, is that three things to learn from now. One of them is that you will have times that you're going to have to stand alone. Um, there's going to be times in your life where you'll just have to stand alone. Um, you can hear God's voice and obey um, and you will mess up, right? There's a lot of hope in that. You just will. You will mess up, but you have been saved because of the grace that God has given us. Um, and remember those th three things as we go into the content this week. Um, kids, there are some questions for you. If you want to uh, talk to your parents, there is some questions at the bottom of the sheet that they have in front of them there. So we'll let you guys go through those group questions for kids and then adults will jump right into your content. All right, adults, here is your first question. I want you to start by reading Genesis 6, uh, verse 9 through 22. And then here's the question in this. What are the specific things that God commanded Noah to do? Um, and in those specific things, how did Noah respond? Question number two. What would be the thing that you are most afraid to stand alone in? All right, I want you to start by reading Romans 12, verse 2, and then look at this question here. Have you ever been around someone and start to talk like them. I had a few buddies uh, when I was growing up, growing up that whenever we were around each other, uh, we would just start talking in a very similar way. And whenever I'd see uh, my wife after, she'd be like, you were around those guys, weren't you? Yeah, because we all had a very similar talking style. Um, and I wanna use another illustration. You know, like one of those lint rollers that you use for pets often and you roll it on your clothes and it takes off all the pet hair. Imagine with me if I would just walk around, right? If I take that uh, maybe to the bathroom, right? And just roll it wherever I go. It's gonna pick up the things that I'm around, right? Good and bad, both sides of it. Um, and as we look at these next few questions here, I want you to imagine this. I'm not like accusing you of being in locations that you shouldn't, but we need to understand that the locations that we are and the things that we allow ourselves to be around, um, even if we're not trying to pick it up, imagine that lint roller just, it will grab some things that we're around. So take that illustration in mind as we answer these next few questions together as a group. Um, we are actively in the world. And even when we don't want to be in it, um, the world is going to stick to us in some ways. So what do you feel might be trying to stick to you from the world today? All right, for question number four, um, it may be hard sometimes to measure what you're around. Like, are the things that I'm around good or are they bad? What does this look like? Um, you may be asking yourselves that question right now. And I want you to think, um, if you're thinking about how do I measure it, are you being led to serve or are you being led to be selfish? Um, when we think about the areas in our lives, I think that's how we need to bring a measuring stick up and be like, okay, how is this, 
How am I responding in these different ways? So here's the two questions in this with that in mind. What specific things in your life are you being led um, towards being selfish? And then on the very opposite end of it, what things lead you towards being selfless? And that could look like serving, right? How does how do those things impact your lives? All right, for number five, I want you guys to start by reading Genesis 8, 20 through 22, um, and then talk about what does covenant mean to you? And what does this tell you about who God is from reading this covenant language? All right, for these last, set, last sets of questions, I'm gonna just kind of mutter some questions off and I'll let you guys decide as a group what ones you wanna uh, tackle a little bit um, because it really all talks around the voice of God, right? We see in Noah's life how God is, is very present and active and speaking in Noah's life. And sometimes we don't see that as much here and we don't know how to listen for it. So I'm going to give you some questions, wrestle with these as a group. Um, and I'm excited to hear what these conversations look like. So here's a few questions that you can wrestle with. Have you heard God's voice? If so, when? Um, do you know what the voice of God would sound like if you were to hear it? And what words would he say? Um, can God speak to anyone? Do you make the time to listen if God is trying to speak to you? And how do you make that time to listen? I want to leave you with one challenge this week. Um, it's what area in your life do you want to try stand alone in? Um, this culture offers us so many options to be able to do that. I want you guys to think about your lives and, and name one very specific thing that over the next week, you're going to try stand alone in, knowing that um, you need to stand in, um, you need to stand alone. So. If you have some more time and want to jump into our digging deeper section, I'd strongly encourage it. We look at uh, some more water language, especially in the book of Peter. So if you got more time, uh, just stay tuned for the digging deeper section on that paper that you got. Otherwise, we will see you guys next week.